Far from ordinary, you damn sure are. You're from Texas. <laughs> if you're ever down in Texas, I'm far from ordinary. He's a YouTuber. You see his window? He's a YouTuber from Texas called Far From Ordinary. He doesn't know that he's on my channel right now. <laughs> hey, Far From Ordinary, here's your f***ing official Benny Loco shout out. How do you like me now? <laughs> Welcome to Joshua Tree. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. We spent the week in Joshua Tree, California. This is actually our third time in Joshua Tree, California. Each time we had intentions on going through Joshua Tree National Park, but we just never made it through. We finally made it through this time. It's a beautiful park to drive through. Yeah. It's in a very strange area because it's just kind of surrounded by the city. It's worth the driving through. There's a loop that goes all the way through. I think for us, we had a more enjoyable time looking at all of the strange things that were in Joshua Tree. The Noah Purifoy Outdoor Sculpture Museum. This place was kind of cool. 10 acres full of large scale sculptures just made out of like repurposed junk. Repurposed? Repurposed. Repurposed. Re Lots of cool, interesting stuff there. And the clouds, it was like moody that day. So I think it added to the entire mystique of the area. Yeah, the, the museum is really interesting on its own and then when you read up on Noah and his history it's pretty cool. He was in Joshua Tree from like 1989 until he passed away in 2004 creating this masterpiece. Lots of different art installations out there like you said all made from repurposed junk but walking through there it's not just stuff that you walk past and look at it's stuff that you can kind of interact with and get close to and walk through one of the things that really stood out to me and because we were there on a windy day and wind is a huge part of the desert mm -hmm. period and i don't know if it was purposeful or if it just happened to work out that way but everything seemed to make a sound. I think sometimes I'm a little more sensitive to sounds anyway, but it was really interesting to hear uh, these pieces kind of come to life. It, I don't know. It was just, it was a cool place to be. It was a cool place to be. And it makes sense. Like you build all of that stuff outdoors and it is windy pretty much all the time. So I guess it does make sense that sound would be an element in one of those things but it was just visually spectacular to walk through there all kinds of amazing stuff it's free to get in um, it's dog friendly there's one way that you should enter this place and i'll throw up the map below you should only come in from this specific direction because our base camp was behind this area and google maps will tell you to drive these roads they are not they are roads, they're dirt roads, it's soft sand. And some of these roads even say four by four only and you just go through and it's soft sand. Right. So if you come up from a specific direction, you'll have paved road pretty much all the way there. Definitely worth going through. Yeah. Definitely worth stopping through and seeing what this place has to offer. And read up on the history, there's a foundation, mm -hmm. a Noah Purifoy foundation that helps to keep this place alive. They go in and they fix up things that are maybe getting a little worn from the weather. I mean, yeah. you know, the weather's not nice to anything mm -hmm. out here. So it's just, it's a really cool stop. Yeah, definitely. The Glass Outhouse Art Gallery. It was created in 2009 by a woman named Laurel. Lots of outdoor quirky stuff. They have like porta potties that are made of glass that you can see out, but they can't see in. Mm -hmm. They're working toilets. You can actually use them and they are the bathrooms. Yeah, actual flushing toilets. Mm -hmm. um, her story is really interesting. She has been on that property for over 40 years. She and her husband used to run a commercial rabbit breeding something out of the property and out of some of the buildings that are now art galleries. Her husband passed away and uh, she's always been into art, but she kind of wanted to do things her own way. She didn't want to play by other art galleries rules and regulations. And she figured she wasn't the only person who felt that way. Mm -hmm. So she started her own art gallery and made her own rules. And there's a few different 
areas, different artists can come in and, you know, some of the sections will switch out like once a month. Right. And then there's another one that's maybe every three months. And to go in there and see art from so many different artists mm -hmm. that can be purchased. And Laurel doesn't take a commission. She just wants people to be able to get their art out there in front of people. Mm -hmm. And even children. She said she's really big on getting kids involved in art. So there's stuff in there from kids as young as 10 and 11 years old. Uh, it, it's just, it's cool. It's a, it's a good story. Laurel is super cute. Uh, she that was her that day? Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And her dog, yeah. Taffy. Mm-hmm. So the place is obviously dog friendly, mm -hmm. dog running around. It's free to get in. They do, do take donations. Right. Um, they had lots of cool stuff there. There was this kaleidoscope thing that we like looked oh, into yeah. and it could like distort your face. And like, it was strange. I immediately use it as an avatar picture, <laughs> but you're encouraged to like take pictures and look in there. They had all kinds of outdoor stuff, like little pigs and birds and like a giant Pepsi thing. They had a little chapel. It's a working chapel that people actually get married in. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was telling us that people message her be like you know thanks for letting us use your chapel and she's like oh, i didn't even know you were here no. so it's it's cool the whole place is cool mm -hmm. it adds to the quirkiness um, and playfulness and to the general mystique of joshua tree in general so it's definitely worth stopping through yeah the world famous crochet museum self-proclaimed world famous this was created by a woman named sherry elf in 2009 she rescued this photo booth from off the side of highway 62 in yucca valley and turn it into the world's largest crochet museum. She doesn't even know how to crochet. That's funny. She actually, this place is, she collected a bunch of crochet things and then stuffed them here. And people have added to the collection over the years. That's cool. So it's very tiny. It's in a photo booth, but it is full of all kinds of crochet mm -hmm. items. So and there's an air conditioner in there. So I'm sure it's cool in the summer. Um, it was just kind of cool to see. It is cool. The beauty bubble, the bubble salon. This uh, is like two doors down from the crochet museum. So yeah. if you see one, go see the other. Definitely. It was created by a guy named Jeff. Nicest guy in the oh world. Oh my goodness. Started collecting beauty artifacts when he was like 20 19? years old, 19 years mm -hmm. old. He's 50 now and doesn't look a day over like 30. Yes. The place is cool. It's a working salon and it it's like, it's historical. All kinds of just artifacts and memorabilia from like the 50s I guess that would be yeah maybe even older I mean there's pieces that date way back before then yeah and lots of quirky little things the old exercise machines that they had in the 50s with the uh, strap that yeah they made. And it would make you lose weight yeah they Damn. had one of those he there's a personal sauna in there oh yeah which is I don't know if I've ever seen one of those mm -hmm. but it's like this weird box that you get in and your head sticks out and uh it's got a mask on it that looks like Mommy Dearest, mm -hmm. which was a little freaky. It's just so much. There's a lot of work, a lot of heart that has been put oh my goodness. into this place. And so. it's all beautifully displayed. It's not like it's just... Somebody's trash collection. Like right. it's very tastefully done. Yeah. There are a few days a week where you can make an appointment and actually go in there and have your hair done. Yep. And, and the rest of the time it's a museum. Yeah, exactly. They actually made a documentary about it. Uh, you can look it up at insidethebeautybubble.com or .net. I forget which one it was. I'll put the link below. This is going to start showing up at the film festivals. Mm -hmm. The trailer looks awesome. The place is great. And Jeff is a great person. So definitely stop through. The Jelly Donut. When we drove past this place, I was going to keep going because it looked like it was shut down. Mm -hmm. But this place has pho. Mm -hmm. which I've never tasted before in my life. I don't think you have no. either. But they also have jelly donuts. What? It's it's an old gas station that they turned into a donut shop, but donuts were the thing. You know, they that was how they started. And somewhere along the line, they decided that they wanted to expand their horizons a little bit, mm -hmm. enter the Vietnamese food. Mm -hmm. Strange combination but everything was really good. We've never had pho before, but it was oh, it was so amazing. And the menu names were hilarious, especially if you know how to pronounce pho correctly. Mm -hmm. um, it was it just tasted really wholesome. It was it's feel good food. Mm -hmm. And the jelly donuts were huge and really good. And we were even there in the afternoon. We went there after we went to the Glass Outhouse mm -hmm. Museum, and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon and 
that's not usually the best time to go and get donuts. Right, at all. And what they did have left, I mean, they were so soft and mm -hmm. I, was, I was impressed. Yeah, so don't pass this place up. Do yourself a favor and stop in and get yourself some pho mm -hmm. and some jelly donuts. The transmission sculpture. I had seen a picture on Instagram of this sculpture. It was something about the sculpture that caught me. The description said, somewhere in the middle of the desert. I don't know if we'll ever see it. Maybe one day we'll happen upon it because the desert could be anywhere. So yes, we're at the campground and we see a couple cars taking this dirt road that goes out past the campground. And Nick says, hmm, I wonder what's up that road. So I get out my phone and I look on maps and I see a little blue dot and I zoom in. And when I tell you I gasped when I saw what was on the map, yeah, it was the sculpture. Yeah. The sculpture. Took a few minutes to get myself under control. We start looking it up and it is, it's on private property. Mm -hmm. It's owned by Mojave Moon Ranch. Right. 220 acre property. We go down there because I have to see this. Everything's fenced off mm -hmm. because it's private property, but they have tried to give people a spot to come and respectfully view the sculpture. We go back a few days later and we're like, wait a minute, the fence has changed. They're building a walkway for people. Like they are trying so hard to allow people to get as close as possible but still respect the private property. Right. So there is a walkway from the little parking that takes you, I mean, so close. You're 50 feet from it and you can see the whole thing. So you can see everything. Anyways, the piece is amazing. It was made by a guy named Daniel Popper who is world renowned for his sculptures at various music festivals throughout the entire country the and world. the world. Yeah. There's a lot more stuff that we didn't go see. Um, I don't know if we'll be back to Joshua Tree, maybe. I mean, we've we've been here, that this is three times here now, and yeah. we've seen all this eclectic stuff that they have to offer in the area. And there's still so many other places in the desert to go mm -hmm. and explore. And we definitely have an appreciation for Joshua Tree, uh, for the things that are there, the people that are there. Mm -hmm. um, it's worth a visit, and not just the National not Park. Not just, yeah. I mean, the National Park is great. Right, but you can see Joshua Trees everywhere. And on um, next week's episode, you'll see we went through this area. Uh, way more Joshua Trees there than in Joshua Tree and National bigger. Park. And we've we've touched on this in previous episodes where you can always find the beauty in the mystique of the National Parks well outside of the National Park. Mm -hmm. So definitely do the loop in the Joshua Tree National Park, but go and see all the other stuff that Joshua Tree has to offer. Right. I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below and help us out with the YouTube algorithm and we will see you on the next one.